Good day, everyone. In the name of the one who calls us to be one, I'd like to invite us all to this time of worship. My name is the Reverend Mary Jo Harrison, and I'm coming to you live from the Greenwood Church in Bedeck, Nova Scotia, where we serve the congregations of Greenwood and Middle River United Churches. There's a few announcements to begin. Uh, first of all, a memorial donation has been made in loving memory of Mary E. Haas from Jane Keller. And, uh, mem and a memorial donation has also been made in loving memory of Norman McLeod from Dave and Nancy Baker. And a memorial donation has been made in loving memory of Robert Burke from Dave and Nancy Baker. And we thank everyone for those memorials. And our condolences go to the families of those who have been lost as well. This afternoon at 2 p.m. we will be having our celebration of animal service here at Greenwood. Uh, this is an ecumenical service, so everyone in the community is invited to attend. Uh, for this service, uh, people are asked to bring their own lawn chairs because we're hoping to have it outdoors, but if the weather's inclement, then we will move it inside. Uh, and also, uh, people are asked to bring photos of their pets, either pets that they've had in the past or pets that they have now. Uh, we're not asking people to bring actual animals because we're trying to... Uh, keep things uh, as safe and simple as possible for this year. This is the first year we're trying this, so uh, we thought we would start with just photos of pets, and people can bring those for uh, a special blessing as part of the service. All are welcome, and all COVID regulations will be followed for this service. Next week, we will be celebrating on October the 31st, uh, the third anniversary of Greenwood becoming an affirming ministry within the United Church. Uh, the service will be held during our regularly scheduled worship time and details of this service are being worked out so uh, stay tuned for information about that. As we enter into this time of worship, may our hearts and our minds be opened anew to the guidance and inspiration that comes to us from the Holy Spirit as we light our candles today. We light our Christ candle and our affirming candle today in a spirit of faith that tells us that the light and warmth of these two candles can be recognized by all, by all that shines forth from them for all of us. Amen. Our churches are located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This, this, Territory is covered by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people first signed with the British Crown in 1726. This treaty recognized Mi'kmaq and Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. As people of Christ's way, let us be a people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation to all of our neighbors and relations in community. Amen. Let us join together now in our call to worship. Come to this sacred space, a space we create together with the Spirit. Come to this holy place that has welcomed generations before us and will welcome generations after us. Come to this sanctuary, this sacred space that seeks to be a safe and welcoming place for all, filled with people who care for one another. Come to this moment in time with praise, with love, and with hope. Come, let us worship. And together our opening prayer, let us pray. Draw close, dear God, so that we may know your presence and your call. Show us that you are near and that you notice us. Open our hearts so that we may experience all of creation praising you. Open our spirits till we recognize you in Jesus and in one another, caring, sharing, blessing. Remind us as we settle into this time of prayer that it is we who need to find ways to draw closer to you because you are already close to us. 
Amen. Let us continue to pray with our prayer for renewal. Let us pray. Holy One, we come together in community as one heart and body. Braid us together, binding us to one another in love. We recognize in community that when one of us struggles, all of us struggle. We pray that you will braid us together, binding us in love to one another. We join together in this time of prayer with a new desire to understand those in our midst as we pray for you to braid us together, binding us in love to one another. As we are here in this time and place together, we pray to be moved to understand the journey of others a little bit better today and that we may be ever mindful of the opportunities for right relationships that are always before us. Let us be bound in love to one another, now and always. Amen. As we prepare to read our scriptures, let us pray for illumination. Let us pray. Open our spirits and our hearts this day, O God, O Christ, O Spirit. Enable us to receive with new understanding today's scripture message that your words of life may draw us deeper in love with you and with one another. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth coming, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, for he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, Bartimaeus sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately Bartimaeus regained his sight and followed him on the way. And our second reading comes to us from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 7 to 9. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those with labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolation I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a parent to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. As we reflect upon both of these passages, May we find wisdom for our journey. Amen. A while back, I came across a cartoon that really made me stop and think differently about this world we are living in. I posted it on our Facebook page a few days ago so uh, people can take a look at it. But in case you can't read it or see what's going on in the picture or you have trouble finding it, I'll describe it for you. It shows a bunch of children waiting at the entrance to a public building for the caretaker to shovel away the snow that has accumulated in front of the building, preventing them from going inside. While the caretaker is shoveling the front steps, one of the children, who is in a wheelchair, politely asks the caretaker if they would remove the snow from the accessibility ramp that is adjacent to the snow covered, the snow encrusted steps. The caretaker answers the child's request by saying that the ramp and anyone who needs it would have to wait because the children were waiting for the steps to be cleared of snow and debris and he didn't want to keep them all out waiting out in the cold. The child in the wheelchair responds to this by pointing out that if the ramp is cleared off first, 
No one would need to wait because all of the children could use the ramp, regardless of whether or not they had mobility issues that made the ramp the only way that they could make their way into the building. I was reminded of this cartoon and its message uh, this past week when I heard news reports about the newly installed accessibility platform that has been added to the grounds of the area known as Peggy's Cove here in Nova Scotia. Many of those who were interviewed about the new platform and observation deck in various sources of media this week had nothing but good things to say about what had been added to the cliffs overlooking this famous local landmark. Regarding it as a giant move forward that will make this beloved scenic area one that can now be fully and safely enjoyed by all people, regardless of their level of physicality or any mobility issues they may have. For those who have no known issues with their mobility, this new platform is simply a new way for them to enjoy the same scenery that has always been open to them. And for those with mobility issues, this platform removes the barriers that had once prevented them from being able to take in the same beautiful sights provided by the natural wonders of Peggy's Cove that everyone else has always been able to enjoy. The addition of this platform to the coastline of the cove was not an idea that was in universally embraced by the public as a whole at first. In fact, when the plan was first announced in January of this year, there was a small yet vocal group who spoke against the construction of any kind of platform around the rocks on Peggy's Cove. Those who were part of this protest group were opposed to the project because they feared that the natural beauty of the landscape and its majestic views would somehow be marred if this human-made structure was put in the midst of it. Some of the folks had called the area around Peggy's Cove their home for years and raised concern that the views that they have known and loved for generations would be forever altered by the addition of a viewing platform, while others had only visited the cove and felt compelled had only visited the cove but felt compelled to speak up in favor of maintaining the status quo in a place that they had come to know and love. But none of these individuals, in their desire to keep things familiar and comfortable for themselves, had given much thought to the needs of those who, in the days before the platform became a reality, were unable to enjoy those same beloved views due to the physical barriers and limitations that existed for them. One such person who was interviewed for the paper during his visit to the Cove earlier this week told reporters that, due to his use of a wheelchair, any visit that his family made to that location required that he remain in the parking lot while his able-bodied family members explored the ground on foot and joined the, in enjoying the views that he himself could not access while using his wheelchair. Now, for the first time in his life, he had been able to experience for himself all of the things Peggy's Cove has to offer because the barriers that once limited what he was able to enjoy of that place have been removed once and for all. Reading about those who spoke in opposition to the building of the new accessibility platform reminded me of a story that one of my former AST professors shared with our class one time about her time as minister to a congregation in rural Nova Scotia many years ago. During this minister's time serving This building could only be accessed at every outside entrance by a set of steps, making it impossible for those with, uh, with mobility issues to gain access to the church without great difficulty, if in fact they were able to access it at all. In an effort to resolve this dilemma, a proposal was made to build an accessibility ramp onto one of the entrances so that those who could not climb steps would have a barrier-free way to enter and leave the church. This proposal was universally rejected by the entire session because none of the members of the committee wanted to add something to the outside of the church that would alter the appearance of the building in any way. My professor concluded her story by saying that as she left in her car to go home from that meeting, 
Her wheels were squealing and spinning so much that the church and its members were left in a huge cloud of dust. So angry was she that a congregation she was serving had chosen to reinforce an already existing barrier that was already doing so much to keep certain people out rather than doing what they could to erase those barriers in the name of full accessibility for everyone who might want to join in with the ongoing life and work of their church community. In our reading from Mark's Gospel today, we meet a character named Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is a character who's all too familiar with the notion of being held back from full participation in the world around him because of something that limits him. In fact, you could say that this barrier is the story of his life up to this point. The most obvious our obstacle is that is holding him back is a physical one, his blindness. This inability to see anything in the world around him has made it impossible for Bartimaeus to participate in that world in anything but the most marginal and limited of ways. As a humble beggar, entirely dependent upon the kindness and compassion of those around him for any kind of sustenance or support. It isn't until Jesus comes upon the scene that we find ourselves face to face with another, more insidious barrier that stands between Bartimaeus and the world he so wants to be a part of. This one, unfortunately, is a more human-made form of resistance, built by the uncaring and indifferent attitudes of those around Bartimaeus, his so-called neighbors in community. When Bartimaeus uses his voice to draw Jesus' attention in his direction, the crowd of other witnesses who are around him try to silence him by telling him to just shut up. I don't think they were concerned about any threat of noise pollution that Bartimaeus' outdoor voice might represent to them or their immediate environment, but it was that they had already made up their minds about what kind of a place someone like Bartimaeus could or should occupy in their world. It was the one that he was already in, on the margins, in the dark, away and apart from the concerns of able-bodied folks such as themselves, which was always a place where he would never be welcome. But even with all those stubborn souls trying so hard to keep him in his place, Bartimaeus refuses to stay where they want him to, silent and blind and forgotten on the sidelines. He continues to raise his voice to Jesus, crying out for the mercy that Bartimaeus somehow knew Jesus would grant him access to upon request. When Jesus hears his voice, he responds by standing still in one spot, stopping his motion completely, making it possible for even someone with a limited field of vision to be able to locate him without too much trouble. He then calls for someone from the crowd to offer Bartimaeus whatever additional supports he might need to make his way to Jesus' side in that place. Thankfully, some of the more compassionate members of the crowd respond by using their ability to see and navigate to guide Bartimaeus to his long sought after meeting with Jesus. Once the two of them are face to face, Jesus asks Bartimaeus what he is seeking, to which Bartimaeus responds by asking for the physical barrier that has held him back for so long to be lifted once and for all. Inspired by his unshakable faith, Jesus grants Bartimaeus his wish immediately, making it possible for him to see. Now free to move about as he wished, Bartimaeus makes the life-changing decision to devote himself to following Jesus as a new and dedicated disciple into a world and a future where nothing would hold him back ever again. The prophet Jeremiah introduces his readers to a vision of the world where no barriers to participation in a life created by God are allowed to remain or exist for anyone. In the reading, we hear of a world where all of God's people are brought back together in a new and everlasting community, living together fully in God's name. And when Jeremiah refers to all God's people, that is precisely what he means. All of God's people. No one is left out or excluded from this vision, even those that a traditionally nomadic culture might have been accustomed to leaving behind as they move their community from place to place because of the limitations placed upon them by any kind of physical disability, including the ones mentioned in the prophecy itself, blindness, mobility issues, 
even pregnancy as a pre-existing condition that could make women vulnerable to the dangers of travel. All of these people and their conditions are invited and included fully in God's vision of the future, one where they and everyone else will not only have level ground to move upon, but they would also have a completely level playing field to live upon from this day forward. This is still the vision that we as a whole people of God are called to uphold and make a reality here in our day and age. And the only way we can do this is to roll up our sleeves and do all that we can to identify and dismantle the attitudes and ways that still serve as barriers to those who are being excluded or kept out for any discernible reason that could possibly hold them back. Those barriers can be overcome with the right kinds of supports and those supports can only come into reality if those of us who have full freedom to be who we are make and accept the changes that need to happen in order to make all of this and more fully accessible for everyone in our midst. Sometimes the things that, need the, that most need to be changed are the ways in which we who are able to see the world perceive the world. And it is only when we do this that those last remaining barriers will come tumbling down, leaving nothing but a clear and open path forward, a path that will finally be fully, will be finally fully accessible to all who want to be a part of it. May it be so now and forever. Amen. Let us join together now in a prayer of dedication and thanksgiving for our offering. Let us pray. In this time of giving, O God, we give thanks for the invitation that is before us to take part in God's great enterprise of healing the earth, of caring for those who are vulnerable, of building up Christian community. May these, our offerings, be blessings that break down barriers and bring the world ever closer to the better world that you and we dream about. Amen. Let us continue to pray now with our prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, whose care shows no bounds and respects no barriers, we are called to be your church, the body of Christ. May the Holy Spirit working within and around us guide our actions in honoring Christ so that others will become aware of your love and your presence in the world. As faithful followers, we endeavor to live like Christ, like Jesus seeking justice, being compassionate and forgiving ourselves and others as Christ forgives without limit. May we always seek to live as Jesus lives, crossing barriers of race, class, culture, gender, and ability, living in unconditional love that makes room for everyone, God, our neighbors, our friends, our enemies, even strangers. And may we live that love not grudgingly, but sincerely from our hearts. We pray this day that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we may do our part to stop forces that cause great harm, such as pollution, and the misuse and overuse of limited resources that cause climate change, remembering always our promise to live with respect in creation by participating in your work of healing and mending our earth. We pray for those who are weighed down by illness, both physical, mental, and emotional, as well as grief and loneliness. May they and their loved ones experience the support they need to be made strong by your steadfast love. Merciful and loving God, may we be inspired by the Holy Spirit in your unending great grace and mercy, learning to forgive ourselves and others for as many times as it takes. As disciples of Jesus, may we ever see the presence of God in our lives and in the world, and in the words given to us by Jesus in a spirit of love. Let us pray now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We have received the good news. Now we must go proclaim that good news, live that good news, be that good news, in all that we are about in the world beyond these walls and the walls that house us. God's love is extended to all people, without restriction, without condition, and without exception. And this love includes all of us, always, now and forever. Amen. I thank you for joining me today. I wish you a wonderful week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and take care.